Hi guys, welcome in. Today I have some exciting pictures to show you. And as we go throughout the pictures, I want you guys to tell me what you notice happening to them. So first we have a sundial, and then we have a water clock. We have an hourglass, a bell tower, a wall clock, and an alarm clock. So who can tell me what they noticed happening in those pictures? Yes, Mackenzie. They're getting newer. That's right. They are getting a lot newer, huh? Anyone else? Did you guys notice anything? Well, they were changing throughout time. Some were getting newer. And so today we're going to go back in our book and look about how all those different types of clocks were invented. So our goal today is to be able to outline and talk about all the different types of clocks and their events on a timeline. So students will be able to outline the timekeeping methods throughout history using the text about time by creating timelines. So this is our book about time and it goes back to the very beginning of history and how the very first timekeeping methods were made all the way until today of what we know as clocks. So we know we have phones, we know that they're on our ovens and on all around our house, right? And so we're gonna look at all the events that took place in between. So what kind of clocks do you guys have in your houses? Yes? Alarm clocks. Alarm clocks, that's right. Does anyone have one of those grandfather clocks that chirps every hour? Yeah? You're one of those? Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, well some are newer and some are older. And that's how a timeline works. So a timeline, starts to the beginning of something and events happen in between. So your grandfather clock that was chirping probably started somewhere over here while your alarm clock or the clock on your phone was probably invented somewhere over here. And that's how we know we sequence our events by what was at the beginning and what happens after it. All right. So by the end of our three days in our lessons, we want to be able to explain events. But before we can explain things, we have to get a big picture of what exactly took place. So today's focus is all about the events themselves. So I want you guys to tell your partners about your favorite Christmas and what you remember from that favorite Christmas. <coughs> all right, go ahead, you have 30 seconds to talk. about your favorite Christmas? My favorite Christmas was probably when I was eight and I got my boogie board. Wow. So she got a boogie board. And so Christmas is an event, right? We have so many things that happen for Christmas. And getting her boogie board was a detail of that event happening. And we need these details to be able to explain our events and to be able to prove that they were true. We can't just say things out of thin air. We have to be able to back them up with details. So today, we would focus, say, on Christmas, just Christmas itself, and then later throughout the week, we'll fill it in with all the details. So can you guys give me a fist to five, with five making the most sense of what I just talked about, and one you're still a little bit unsure? All right, hold up your hands. All right, perfect. All right, let's start our reading. But as we go throughout our reading, there's an event in the book that we're gonna to add to our timelines. I'm gonna say the word event, and you're just gonna say the word event after me. So if I say, in 2018, I graduated high school, event, you would say? Event. Event, perfect. You don't have to say the whole sentence, just that word. All right, let's begin. Time to read a book, time to wash dishes. We look at the clock and know that we have five minutes more to sleep or to catch the bus. We know that the things called events happen as those minutes tick by. And when the clock has moved ahead by, say, five minutes, we know that time has passed because the events of those minutes are now just a memory. Simple enough. The clock sweeps ahead and everything left behind tumbles down the drain pipe 
from here and now into some mysterious place called the past. Well, maybe it's not so simple, but let's take a closer look at this idea we must all live with, time. Time waits for no one, time flies, time is on my side. We've heard some version old of the many sayings about time out of bounds, and that's because it's a topic people frequently think about. So how do we be begin to define time? We can begin by saying that time is what is measured by a regular or standard interval, a second, a minute, an hour, for example, that is chimed, ticked, beeped, or in some way displayed by a time measuring device called a clock. And people have always used some kind of clock. Our ancient ancestors relied on the sun for daily timekeeping. For them, it was either nighttime or daytime. And when the sun was directly overhead, it was midday or noontime. Seasonal time, the coming of winter, the return to spring and summer was of particular importance for survival. And this can be demonstrated by noting moon cycles and the seasonal position of the sun in the sky. As people kept records of the natural divisions of time, days, moon, cy moon cycle months, yearly cycles of the seasons, they were able to predict the coming season and know with some accuracy how many days of warm, cool, or rainy weather they would have. These records were called calendars. Around 3500 BC, the Sumerians, probably the first people to widely use a calendar, had a lunar-based or moon-based year of 12 months. New moon cycles made up of 30 days each. Event? Event. Perfect. The Egyptians, by 2600 BC, had a solar base or sun based calendar of 365 days, and they began their year with the rising of the east of the Cyrus, the dog star, which coincided with the flooding of the Nile. Event? Event. The week, which is not a natural division of time, has been set by each society days for work, worship, rest. The Greeks used three 10-day weeks per month. The Romans used an eight-day week with the eighth day reserved for the market festivities. But after 8200, they changed it to a seven-day week. Event? Event. The difficulty in making a calendar, however, is that natural time cycles do not fit together into yearly units. A year that is one full revolution of the year of the Earth around the sun is longer than 12 new moon cycles and contains a fraction more than 365 days. Therefore, days must be added to keep the calendar in time with actual seasons. The Roman ruler Julius Caesar in 46 BC put together a 355 day calendar based on the Egyptian model, but beginning on the year January 1 and ordered every fourth year an extra day be added to the month of February. Event? Event. The sleep year, however, over time made the calendar run out of steps with the seasons. In 1582, Pope Gregory VIII revised the Julian calendar by omitting three leap years every four centuries. That brought the calendar into close agreement with the actual seasons. And today, we and much of the world continue to use the Gregorian calendar. Event? Event. Perfect. Good job, guys. So now thinking back to the very first calendar that we talked about, I just gave away the answer. What was the first thing used to keep time? Calendar. calendar. Perfect. All right, now talk to your neighbor and tell your neighbor what that calendar was based on. See if you guys can remember with each other. All right. It was based on the moon, right? that we guys got perfect. All right, so now we're gonna transition into our timelines. So take your papers, turn them long ways, and make a line down the middle of your paper like you're making a long timeline. We wanna see how our events are gonna be sequenced into order. So I'm gonna do the first one with you guys. So everything that I pointed out in the book, I want on your timelines, okay? And so in your descriptions for each of the events, they're going to be about full sentences, and I don't want you to copy word for word from the book. Let them be concise and clear so I know exactly what you're talking about. So you can choose to write the date on either the upper part of the desk or the lower part. For your guys' purposes, I'm going to write it on the lower part. So our first event took place in 3500 BC. <coughs> okay, and so an example of a concise um, description of the event would be 
the Sumerians used a lunar based calendar. And so now, not every event in the book is going to be in order because some say on this page it's going to have the event all the way over here and the next page might go back. So just make sure you're keeping everything in track of time. Alright, if you guys have any questions, let me know and let's get going.